The Defense Department says it's on track to implement its zero trust strategy by fiscal year 2027. That strategy encompasses the entire DOD. Matt Topper is president of Uber Ether. He says that strategy might not be named well. The zero trust moniker is really wrong, right? It should really be defined trust. And what I've seen over the last few years is that that resiliency of multi-provider standards base has actually been falling apart as we've moved towards zero trust. And there's a lot of, well, if we go buy this vendor solution, it'll solve it all. And the problem is that's great until you meet in the field and that other group you're meeting with has a different vendor solution. And they're like, well, if you just download this, their client and our client or copy all of your data to our data, it'll work fine. And that's not how trust ever even works in the real world. So we've started to really lose a lot of this idea of resiliency where it doesn't matter what cloud provider you're on. It doesn't matter what piece of hardware you're running in a data center or in a backpack on someone's kit because the pressure's mounting and we're losing, like, we've got to get it done, get it done, but some of that core engineering to be resilient of, hey, if a provider gets hacked, we need to be able to operate tomorrow on another one yeah. or be able to pivot and rekey an entire network in under an hour. Um, that's really the resilient factor that we need. Yeah, it's an interesting definition because I think it's an evolution of the way people think about resiliency. I think for a long time, especially in the cyber realm, it revolved around how fast can we recover if we get hit, and what you're describing is partly that, but certainly not entirely that, it sounds like. Absolutely, it, you you don't have time to recover anymore. Yeah. Right? We look at a lot of the breaches that have happened in the last year, and it's a flip of a switch, right? They're encrypting machines with ransomware across an entire network. We just saw last week with the automotive industry, not only the provider, but thousands of dealerships within an hour. They were all encrypted and yeah. locked, that nothing is working. and in a military setting within the DOD, we don't have that ability to stop the fight and say, oh, we got a problem, don't right. attack us. Yeah. And having that resiliency of, hey, we can rekey this whole thing, all of our machine to machine identity pieces. We don't care where it runs. We don't care which Kubernetes platform we're on, or even if we're on Kubernetes, we can say that's compromised. We're under an attack for an hour, but in an hour, all of it will be cleared out. What are the steps that you're seeing organizations take to reach that, that vision that you just laid out? And are they the right steps that you think that those organizations should be taking to get to the end state that you described? Yeah, I think right three years ago, agencies were making that decision of which cloud provider are we gonna pick? Is it gonna be Amazon? Is it gonna be Azure? Is it gonna be GCP or something else? And today they've started to realize it's all of them. Right, with the push of AI, different tools, technologies, different partnerships, they realize to meet their mission need, they have to find a way. So it's starting to emerge with this idea of how do we have the same security profiles, the same policies across all of these different providers and know we're secure, and then looking to continually manage, maintain in a consistent way, no matter where they go. How do you help your government partners understand where they are in the timeline and what they still need to do in order to achieve whatever, whether their goals are revolving around zero trust mandates or some cloud migration or some other type of digital modernization or whatever. Yeah, so what our organization has done is we've traditionally focused on the identity and access management side, which everyone looks to the user pillar in zero trust, but it really goes to machines and devices. But we've taken a lot of the best of breed vendors who are multi-cloud capable and ability to run offline or in traditional data centers and brought them together as a package that an agency can say, here's the best practices that follow FAR clauses, that follow all the things that should be doing. And we get them to an optimized level within months versus having to have a team that's integrating that over years and then continuing to maintain. Mm -hmm. how, how do you help, how does someone evaluate where they are in order to understand when they sit down with somebody like you to be able to tell you, this is what we have, this is what we need, or maybe we don't know what we need, but we know where we want to go. Yeah, so a, a lot of it is what we do with our customers is sit down and you just have to dig in. You can't do an inventory because you could have bought the best product in the world, but the implementation is garbage. Or they just left the front door wide open and never even put a lock on it. So you have to sit down and say, here's minimum standard, here's 
as you move up to an optimized level, where you need to be and help them build that roadmap. And the places where, and every agency, depending on their mission, has a different risk point of where the attackers are gonna come in and those entry points where they're most likely to happen. So you might have to push here faster and harder than pushing on this one. It's not the same for everyone, but we'll come in, look at it, go, okay, here's what you have. Here's things that are quick fixes. And then here's the plan to actually get you where you need to be.